celebrated on the streets of Miami's Little Havana neighborhood. Uh, and as I was just saying, I mean, no wonder. I mean, this is a man who murdered thousands and thousands of people, an estimated 11,000. He is someone who is estimated to have stolen, in today's dollars, $50 billion from people there, just confiscated their property. And so finally, they have some relief. But contrast that celebration with the responses that you saw in the media and even with President Obama's response. In fact, in a statement, our president wrote, and I quote, we offer condolences to Fidel Castro's family and our thoughts and prayers are with the Cuban people. History will record and judge this enormous impact of this singular figure on the people and the world around him. Okay. I mean, no mention anywhere of the fact that this man was a dictator who imposed a reign of terror on his people? And how do you like this one? Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau expressing sorrow for the death of, quote, Cuba's longest-serving president, and he referred to Fidel Castro as a remarkable leader. A remarkable leader? I mean, he has walked that one back a bit, Mr. Trudeau in response to the outrage, understandably, that he got. Meanwhile, you get the liberal media, which is not to be outdone by Trudeau or Obama. Take a look at this in New York Times, calling Castro a revolutionary who defied the U.S. and the Washington Post, writing that he was a spiritual beacon to the world's political far left. Joining me right now with their reaction, Matt Welch, an editor-at-large at Reason Magazine, and Brent Fizell, the founder and president of Media Research Center. Good to see both you guys. What do you think, Brent, when you, when you see uh, that kind of terminology to describe Describe Fidel Castro, someone that murdered thousands of people in his country and confiscated so much property and oppressed his people the way he did. Why does the New York Times and the Washington Post show him this kind of deference, if you would? Fidel Castro has been a darling of the far left since 1958. Um, it goes back decade after decade after decade, where the radical left has just been been uh, infatuated by him and Che Guevara. Um, what you won't see in any of these uh, incredible um, stories that are coming out are, are things like Castro himself acknowledging that he urged the Soviet Union to let off nuclear bombs against the United States. That doesn't matter. What matters is there's a good health care system in Cuba. Never mind the absolute squalor that they're living in. No one flees the United States or any other nation in the world to go live in Cuba, and yet they celebrate Cuba. Uh, well, I actually, I have one person that did actually try and leave the United States to go live in Cuba. But that's only because he's a good reporter who wanted to actually understand the community there. I hear you, Brent. Uh, Matt, uh, you, you have spent time, uh, twice you were telling me in Cuba, once 18 years ago and once uh, more recently this year. It, you know, it, does Brent have it right? I mean, these people are living in squalor. Yeah, they get health care, but you know, no real it, life, no opportunity. Is it free health care when you can't have access to aspirin? When we went there for the first time, we were told yeah. by people who traveled there before, bring stuff, the most basic stuff you can imagine, and give it to people. We gave our friends, um, a Spanish teacher of my wife, rubbing alcohol. She cried. She erupted in tears. She hadn't had disinfecting alcohol in her family for her kids, mm -hmm. living in a place that didn't have running water. She hadn't had that for 20 years. So, uh, yeah, it's great that you have 99.0% literacy rate or whatever the government concocted statistic is. But if you can't read books because they're banned and not being printed, um, there's something not quite as uh, wonderful about those statistics. It's, I want to give a shout out. There are some good reporting being done. The obituary in the Miami Herald, written by our friend Glenn Garvin, mm -hmm. was phenomenal. There is good reporting out there. But Brent is right. From the beginning, Fidel Castro manipulated liberal intelligentsia and the media, specifically the New York Times, Herbert Matthews. He bamboozled him in the hills of the Sierra Madre in 1956, trying to make his revolution look much more bigger than it ever was. And from that moment on, Castro has played journalists in the West like a flute. So in other words, there's this love affair, if you would, uh, many journalists, and we've talked about this before, Brent, and you've done a lot of research and reporting on this. Uh, so many people that are in this, in this sphere uh, come from sort of a leftist mentality anyway. And, and, you know, look, Cuba was sort of the pinnacle of that, right? 
Sure, and they've struggled on the work farms of Harvard and Rutgers and Brown <laughs> University, but you know they haven't been. You know, yeah, you know, Glenn Garvin, great example of someone who has lived in these conditions, who knows these countries, who knows what's going on there, and reports accurately and reports honestly on the conditions there, and it's terrible. A lot of good that education, that healthcare has done that country. That country is living 75 years in the past. They're still using donkeys. But then Brian Williams on MSNBC says they use donkeys because that's the way they'd like to have their transportation. <laughs> you know, uh -huh. look, I mean, you think about how the media <laughs> treated someone like Pinochet in Chile, right, Matt? And, and you know, they, they no love lost there, uh, but very different than this. And, and look, as they should, right? The guy's a dictator. He killed people. He, he you know, he showed no mercy, but it's a double standard. Left-leaning dictators get a better play than right-leaning dictators, and anti-American dictators get better play than pro-American dictators, and that's the way it's always been, unfortunately. Yeah, you know, look, I, I saw President Obama's comments, and I just, I thought again, you know, you want him on our team, Team USA, and when you see him showing that kind of deference to Fidel Castro, you, you know, you, you question some of it. Anyway, Brent, Matt, Thank you so much. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right Thank back. Thank you.